Have you heard about Hawaii? Hawaii with two Y's in the end. That's the state. That is the last and 50th US state. The newest one. And I wrote it wrong on my board. You know this on a new YouTube cup board? Yes, I wrote it with one I. And that was like four videos ago. And all of you have been saying that, oh, you wrote it wrong. Fix it. And I've been forgetting it. So yes, today we will fix it. But connecting to that, we will also find out how the hell did Hawaii became a state. I know it was a separate kingdom, it was a kingdom, a royalty, and now it's just a state. And a state that nobody really knows that much about, so I guess it deserves its own video, because I feel a little, little bit bad for it, knowing how distinct their culture is, why don't they have their freedom anymore? Let's educate ourselves on this topic. 50 states. Hawaii is the one state that is largely not mentioned in much capacity in regards to its acquisition and later statehood, and outside of the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, isn't really mentioned much at all in detail. But how exactly did America get its 50th state? In this video, we'll be answering just that question. Cut out, cut out. The settlement of Hawaii is debated to some degree, with ranges of settlement from 50 ACE all the way up to 950 ACE. By the year 1000, coastal farms were in existence, but it wasn't certain to what degree the isles themselves were settled for some time. By the 1500s, the interior of the Hawaiian islands started to be settled, and eventually, each of wait, 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 so I, if I understood correctly, it was settled by humanity already a thousand years ago, but just the natives, right? Not the Western powers, but 1500s is the time when the co colonialists arrived, right? The main islands were owned by a native king. Captain James Cook was the first to discover the islands in the late 1770s, which, on the fourth voyage of his, is where he was killed following a dispute over a longboat. The Kingdom of Hawaii was established in 1795, with Kamameha the first acting as king. He waged a 15-year war to unify the entire archipelago, and Catholic missionaries started to flood into the island shortly after, causing a large section of the native population to die off due to disease. With a steady decline of population for over a hundred years, as trade with other countries, primarily exporting sugar, fueled the economy. The political unity of the island was rather strong, but during the tenure of Queen Kamamea, Catholic citizens were only given partial rights, with sections of the elite being Protestant. This led to French intervention. Wait, so we have a, a native monarch whose elite is Protestant and there are Catholics also. So there's already a Western politics and relations inside it. And that came immediately as the royal monarchy was established, I guess. I hope to find more out about the native uh, history about Hawaii, but I guess not in that, not in that video. But it's still interesting. ...in 1839 and 1849, and British occupation for a few months in 1843. Following the British occupation, Hawaii was recognized as independent by the US, France, and Britain, being the only non-European nation for the European powers to recognize at that time. Wait, so US and British both recognized Hawaii as independent nation, so, and later it still became a state. I know we're getting to that part, but if it has been recognized as independent, there's already some questions about it, why it's not independent now. American influence in the Hawaiian government began with US plantation owners demanding a say in kingdom politics, oh. and led to the land being divided up largely by the say of local missionaries, leaving only 2% of the land to the common people, with the rest being split between the nobility and the sugar plantations. U.S. control of Hawaii was considered vital for the defense of its west coast, especially Pearl Harbor, and it entered into a variety of negotiations to attempt to gain the islands directly under their influence or control. At the same time, the political unity on the island was being heavily hit, as twice in 1872 and two years later, the king of the islands died without naming an heir, and so an election was called for. With a small rebellion in response to the previous queen not winning, a rebellion that was put down by American British troops, followed shortly by the Reposity Treaties of 1875, while allowing Hawaiian sugar to have free access to the American market, 
something that caused the sugar industry on the islands to boom tenfold, leading to even more plantation control over the political landscape. So the natives only have, the people who just lived there only had 2% of the land, the rest is divided by royalty, the royal families, the monarchy and the plantation owners. Yes, leaving the regular people just very upset only having 2% of their own island. Sure, no, I wouldn't like that at all. In January of 1887, the U.S. began to lease Pearl Harbor, followed shortly by a rebellion against the king in July, which forced through a new constitution. A constitution that heavily weakened the king's powers, empowering the legislator and cabinet of the government, giving the public the power to vote in legislators. Kind of. Wait, so Pearl Harbor was leased. It was not on U.S. base, it was a lease base as like Hong Kong is was Chinese was British lease from Chinese to 1996. This new constitution did allow for Jean residents to vote but blocked Asians as a whole from voting who made up a fair chunk of the island's population. It also reinstated the literacy and personal wealth requirements for voting and increased them nearly 10 times over, meaning that essentially only white males, wealthy from the sugar industry, retained suffrage. While it allowed the monarchy to still technically exist, its power was severely limited. Queen Lilalu Lukani acceded to the throne in January of 18... I got a comment about the names. Hawaiian names are super weird and the native names and the place names and... Liliu Kalani. Damn. Do you have the letter R in Hawaii? I've never heard of it. I've heard many, many funny names, but not the letter R. 91, who merely received petitions from the native Hawaiian population for a new constitution. Over the next two years, she attempted to draft and gather support for a new constitution, but was constantly blocked by the legislator. And a section of European and American settlers established the quote-unquote Committee of Safety. <laughs> who sought the <laughs> island annexation into the United States, drawing from the same party that forced through the 1887 Constitution. In late January of 93, the committee called upon 1,500 men and overthrew the Queen with assistance from U.S. Marines. Wait, so they did what? I missed it. I have to listen to it again. Who sought the island annexation into the United States, drawing from the... So the Committee of Safety wanted to wanted to work for the annexation of Hawaii into US. They were the beginning of it becoming a state, right? Okay. The same party that forced through the 1887 constitution. In late January of 93, the committee called upon 1500 men and overthrew the queen with assistance from US Marines. The queen was banished and imprisoned in her palace again the Marines acted as guards, and the Republic of Hawaii was proclaimed shortly after, with the goal of annexation within the United States. By this time, Grover Cleveland had become president, and Cleveland was anti-imperialist and thought Americans had acted shamefully in Hawaii. He withdrew the annexation treaty from the Senate and ordered an investigation into potential wrongdoing, but of course, the investigation led to nothing. Cleveland had aims to restore the queen to her throne, a counter-revolution in the three-day will con- Wait, this sounds weird. We're talking about the end of the 19th century, and we have a president, Cleveland, who is anti-imperialist and wants to restore monarchies, not take them over, not expand US influence, but degrade it. That is a first. Talking about expanding the US influence, it's a perfect time to expand it to this Estonian YouTuber Cup competition, yes. Most of the orders go to the US, different states, different areas. We also have Guam, which is not even a state, but a districtive island under the US jurisdiction. I still added it because I feel good about it. But today we have five new orders, five different states. Let's go. Howdy folks, welcome back to the Hall of Fame, the Estonian YouTube Cup competition. We have five new names, five new states. We have one Jacob Lecha, Lecha, Lecha. Well, we have that uh, letter O with the dots on it in Estonia. It's called Ö, so I would say Lökär, Lökär. I don't know, it's a, it's a weird letter to see on American name, so you must have European roots, I'm quite sure. You from Coralville, Iowa. 
Now we have a female. Yes, we don't have much, many women don't get the cup, don't know why, that's how it is. But Angela Nelson, Angela, you are doing good for your gender. Yes, invite others also, please. I don't know why it's just a man thing to get the cup. We need more women to do it. So if you know anyone who would be interested, just sign them up. You are from Duluth, Minnesota. But no, Angela, you did not just get one cup. You got two, making you the first woman to get two cups, a legend. Thanks to you, Minnesota has now 11. We have Jerry Lucas, yes, from the old cartoon Tom and Jerry, that Jerry, yes, we have Mouse. We have Mice getting the cup now, super cool. I'm glad a celebrity got the cup, Jerry. Your city is called Airway Heights. I don't really know if that's a city, it's just feels like some mountain or some airway heights, but it's in Washington. We have one Benito Cuevas. Cuevas, Mr. Cuevas. We always have one Hispanic person getting the cup within the orders with one video. Every time we have one, one name at least, Hispanic. They're everywhere. I like it. Hey, I'm not blooded myself. You from Madison, Wisconsin. We have one Jeffrey Besh. You have seen the movie Get Him to the Greek. Yeah, there was Jeffrey. It was it was like a joint that has every drug in it. And smoke Jeffrey, then you have to stroke the furry wall. There's a song about it even. It's really cool. It's a funny topic. But Jeffrey Besh. Your city is called Winsboro, South Carolina. Ooh, South Carolina has 19 now, almost 20, yes, very close. We have some top 5 who have almost 20, very closely tying each other, and then we have North Dakota who is just taking the lead over everything. My friends, thank you for getting the cup, that truly supports the channel. Keep doing what you do best, I'll do about what I can do. Back to the video. The numbers are getting bigger and bigger, I wonder who will get to 50 first. Will it be North Dakota, because it has 34 right now? Will it be Texas? Texas was leading before. Washington has kind of fallen behind a little bit. But my friends, I also have a one patron to name you. Usually we have three, three, but last three videos I have had one because times are different a little bit right now and it's starting to affect. But still, that one person, Peter Aniko. Aniko in Estonian, could be almost an Estonian name. Peter, thank you for becoming a patron. Cleveland had aims to restore the queen to her throne. A counter-revolution in the three-day Wilcox Rebellion was an attempt to overthrow the president on the island and re-establish the monarchy's role. The rebellion failed after three main battles, and the queen officially abdicated. The matter was prolonged until after Cleveland left office. When war broke out with Spain in 1898, the military significance of Hawaiian naval bases as a way station outweighed all other considerations. Okay. President William McKinley signed a joint resolution annexing the islands, much like the manner in which Texas joined the Union in 1845. Spanish-American War was the reason why Hawaii was annexed because it became such an important strategic military um, place. They needed just to take it over. They couldn't allow it to risk for that place to be in foreign hands if they needed that much for their naval bases. Alright, so it was still war and it was annexation, but I guess it wasn't that bloody and there was no genocide like this with the Soviet Union because Hawaiian, no, Hawaiian upper class, the 1% I guess wanted it because they were Americans. So maybe for the people, yes, it wasn't that good, but it didn't seem to me from this video that it was super bloody, so maybe one of the better occupations if you could say that, maybe not, I don't know. Didn't clear that much up for me, honestly. I have to watch one more, maybe. My friends, thank you for sti sticking with me. I'll try to make videos for you as much as I can during this time, every day, if I am able to. Be back tomorrow, and as always, my friends, go and get the cup, and stay cool. Bye-bye.